at MCW, we contribute to research that improves lives both locally, regionally, and also nationally and beyond. We do this in a couple of different ways. One way is by having our doctors, our physicians, and sometimes our scientists take care of patients who have unusual or difficult to treat medical conditions. We can offer them things that other places can't, such as clinical trials, experimental therapies, that they might not be able to get elsewhere. At the same time, we're contributing to the greater field of academic medicine and of the science behind medicine by conducting uh, experiments, by publishing papers and giving talks and spreading the knowledge that we've gained uh, to our colleagues nationally and even globally. In order to attract research funding to our academic medical center and to our medical school, we have to first recruit the best and brightest physicians and scientists. Then we need to support those individuals with state-of-the-art facilities and with funding that allows them to get started, that allows them to do some early experiments and generate data that gives the investigator the ability to determine what is the most promising approach to answering a question or dealing with a particular problem. One point of view is capacity building. We needed to build our capacity in certain areas and specifically our capacity to support the areas that are important in our strategic plan. So the engineering core supports our core facility and my research laboratory and our development of novel technologies. And as an example of research funding that's uh, secured through the support, I've secured two R01s within the last year, which are very large grants from the NIH, both of which are completely dependent on the technological capability and superiority that we have compared to other research groups. And that superiority is maintained specifically through the support of the engineering core. We were able to fund an expansion of the capabilities of the engineering core at MCW. This is a core facility that fabricates pieces of equipment or other items that might be needed in order to conduct experiments. Many researchers, when they can't find an off-the-shelf piece of equipment from a company that will do the job they want, they simply have to abandon that area of research because if you spend decades learning cardiology or some aspect of physiology, you don't have the time to master all the electronics and fabrication specialties that you need to build your own equipment. So engineering is absolutely mission critical to uh, advancing health science, uh, both at the basic research level and at the translation and clinical levels. Another area uh, in which we are improving the readiness of MCW researchers is with our competitive resubmission funding. This funding is made available to researchers who have already submitted an application to a federal or other major funding agency, and they got back reviews from the funding agency. And in the case of some investigators, the reviews told them that they were competitive for funding but not competitive enough to make the cut. And usually the reviews give the investigators an idea of what additional preliminary data they need in order to make their application competitive enough to be funded upon resubmission. So we allow the investigators to uh, conduct some additional preliminary experiments 
in order to generate the data needed to have a successful resubmission of a promising application. So for the first grant, we went in and the review panel liked it. They liked the idea, but they wanted a little more data to convince them. They wanted a little more data to convince them that um, the hypothesis we had was worth pursuing. And then there were some key sort of very cutting edge, technologically advanced experiments that we wanted to do, and they wanted some proof that we could do it. And so um, that's what we had to do. We had to get together as a team and find ways to generate that data so that we could go in on a second round and succeed. The AHW funding was really essential to the success of my grant proposal. The first time around, we needed data. We didn't necessarily have the funds for that data gathering. Uh, so the money we received from AHW supported our ability to do some cutting edge, really um, novel work to show the feasibility to the study panel, to show that we could do the work and that there was actually an exciting and interesting phenotype or effect coming out from the interventions we were doing. Another area of capacity building was is a more clinical area. And the example of a clinical area in which we've improved the capacity for submitting state-of-the-art research applications is having an individual who can help investigators in a just-in-time way to navigate the regulatory issues that they must navigate when organizing and setting up clinical studies and clinical trials. So the project that uh, we had that requires a, a, a new uh, uh, investigative new drug application was one that involved uh, using um, a dietary supplement um, called propionic acid. So we wanted to test specifically whether or not propionic acid might improve blood vessel function in humans isolated in and of itself rather than as part of a, a different product to see if very specifically whether this product could actually improve how blood vessels function. Uh, so we did an investigational new drug application because um, we had uh, some preliminary sort of discussions back and forth with the FDA um, which they indicated that based on what we were proposing for the use and what outcomes we were measuring that we would need an investigational new drug application to be filed and reviewed and approved by the FDA uh, prior to beginning our study. So for researchers faced with the, this type of FDA requirement, the HW has funded for MCW a position for an individual who has actually significant expertise in working with the FDA for on these exact types of, of studies where you need investigational new drug applications uh, to be sent in, helping investigators determine what information they need to be able to have successful applications, to understand what questions to be able to ask the FDA to get the right answer. It's really important to have this type of technical insistence in-house uh, because uh, and clinical investigators are going to run into this very commonly when we start using either dietary supplements and start measuring outcomes that relate to health, health outcomes or um, drugs that people are using that may be being used uh, for purposes that are, are not FDA approved. This grant has several mechanisms to enhance the readiness of MCW researchers for preparing applications to secure uh, research funding. One area which has been very popular is limited needs funding. This is funding that allows an investigator to request from us a piece of equipment or perhaps a piece of expensive software and that will allow the research to go in a different direction, perhaps to pivot a bit, or perhaps to ensure that that researcher has at their disposal the most modern equipment needed to address a particular question or to conduct certain experiments. The HW funding allowed us to purchase a server to analyze um, the large data files that are generated from microbiome research. 
Um, and almost all of our research involves analysis of what we would call big data, these enormous data files and manipulation. So the ability to do that here instead of outsourcing our bioinformatic analysis uh, is incredibly important. So it's called big data for a reason. So a new server was needed to be able to handle these file sizes. Um, just to put it kind of into context, your standard Word document is gonna be about 12 kilobytes. The files that I'm working about working with are about a million times bigger than that. So you multiply that by tens to hundreds of samples and by you know four or five different processes, we're easily into terabytes and huge, huge amounts of data. So we needed the more powerful server in order to be able to handle those, those file sizes. The server is able to increase our competitiveness by letting us offer um, a less expensive in-house resource for being able to analyze your data with in-person um, direct contact for your analysis. The investment has allowed us to um, collaborate with um, many investigators here. Um, it has given rise to probably 15 new grants since it ended um, and close to 40 publications since over the course of, of the grant period and since the grant ended. It's really advanced our our research capacity greatly. Part of our funding is in a bucket that I might call the formation of collaborative teams. We realize that some of the most important and complex health and medical problems are, are best addressed by a team of investigators, not solely by a single investigator working on their own. Therefore, we have provided funding to groups of investigators, groups that are usually made up of three, four, or five principal investigators who work together to ensure that they are addressing complicated problems in ways that are diverse and that will bring together uh, a diversity of viewpoints in order to uh, come up with the best solutions. My research is actually part of a large team of investigators here at MCW. And what we've been studying for the last four or five years, which has led to a major grant submission just this week, has been uh, the regulation of blood pressure and cardiometabolic um, regulation. Um, which has relevance to both animals and, and, and people. Uh, so we have a very diverse, uh, diverse team of investigators in terms of expertise. Uh, the program involves seven or eight different faculty that are present in the Department of Physiology and the Department uh, of uh, Pediatrics. And um, a larger team of research scientists and research technicians, probably numbering about a dozen. So we started conceiving the program about four years ago and it took us two years to develop the ideas and the concepts and the specific aims and the hypotheses among this program. And that's what led to the 2021 uh, application to AHW to support this research. And then since then, it's taken another year and a half. So it's really taken three and a half to four years. So happily, uh, we did receive the grant. After that um, nice funding from AHW, we were able to succeed. We were able to give the data that was needed. And now we're building the team. Uh, the research funding is gonna enable us to do the actual research over the next five years and to continue what was started by the AHW um, grant. And uh, will facilitate the development of brand new knowledge, which will help us to understand uh, blood pressure regulation and uh, what goes wrong and causes hypertension. And with that knowledge, we'll be able to facilitate the development of both treatments and potentially preventative uh, measures. It's important to us to think about the future. Right now, I am already starting to think about the next phase of the MCW Research Strategic Plan and 
how will we work on a, a version two, so to speak, that will allow us to move our research even further ahead.